It's Friday, May 29th, and I want to talk about Roger Federer's match versus Jose Acasuso. Federer won in four yesterday, and I took a couple things away from this match. First of all, I thought Acasuso played real well. His forehand was huge. He was ripping the ball, and it kind of reminded me of Federer's match versus Thomas Burditch at the French Open, where Burditch was just playing out of his mind and really using his forehand to dictate play. And of course, Federer won that match in five when Burditch's level came down just a little bit. Now, Akasuso's level also dropped, but I think a lot of that had to do with Federer. If you look at the stats, Federer actually played a pretty decent match. He served 71% for his first serve. He was plus 27 winners to unforced errors. But Federer's problem was that he was really inconsistent. Let me give you a stat to illustrate just how inconsistent Federer's game was. At love three in the third set, Federer was down love three. He was making 1.4 unforced errors a game. But from that point on, he only made 0.3 unforced errors per game. So it took him basically every three games he would make an unforced error. He made 45 unforced errors for the entire match, 39 up to love three in the third set. And then he made only six unforced errors after that. So he really cleaned his game up. Federer also made an adjustment on his backhand return of serve later in the match. And I thought that helped him pull away. Early in the match, Fed was chipping a lot of backhand returns. He was slicing them back. And since Akasuso's forehand was so hot, he was able to step in and immediately start dictating the point. Later in the match... Fed started hitting those topspin returns and pushing Akasuso back a little bit. So the, the point started more on a neutral footing. And of course, that's a shot Fed's going to need against the doll because that backhand slice is pretty ineffective against the doll. And just generally, I think most players on tour at this point kind of understand that if I hit a serve to Fed's backhand, I'll, he's probably going to slice it back. So I think the topspin backhand is a good adjustment, an adjustment he'll need, not just against Nadal, but many players in the rounds to come. Now, what are the pros and cons that Fed should take away from this match? Well, I think the first pro is serve. 71% as a great statistic, a great number. If he keeps that up the rest of the tournament, he'll be just fine. Second was his forehand. I thought his forehand was great. He was moving the ball around, he wasn't missing a ton of them, and he was really dictating play, so... He needs to keep that level with the forehand. The cons are obviously the inconsistency that he had. His game was just very mercurial. He was hot for some games, and then he kind of just went on vacation. His game just totally left the building. So he's going to need to get a more consistent level of play over the course of an entire match. It it worked against Akasuso, although he got a little lucky. Akasuso had four set points in the first set and, of course, was up, I think, 5-1, in the third, and you play someone like Nadal or Djokovic or a higher level top 10 player, you just can't afford to get that far behind. So he's going to have to be more consistent in terms of his overall level of play. There are a couple things to look for as Federer plays his next couple rounds. In terms of the level of his consistency, obviously that needs to rise, but it's worth keeping in mind that Federer is probably working on some stuff and trying to gear up for the tougher opponents he would play late in the tournament. For example, Fed came to net about 48 times against Akasuso, about once per game, and that's pretty high for Clay. I think against Nadal in the Wimbledon and Aussie Open final, he came to net about 1.2 times per game. And it worked pretty well for him against Nadal in the final Madrid, so he's probably getting his net game into shape for Nadal, Djokovic, and the folks he's going to play later in the tournament. Fed also was using that drop shot, which he himself admitted he hasn't used too often. And one, this is sort of an aside, but one interesting thing to look for when Fed hits the drop shot is where he positions himself when his opponent is moving to the ball. Federer will move inside the baseline, stand basically in no man's land so that he can cut off the ball if the opponent hits it deep, but still get to a ball if the opponent tries an angle drop shot or just a straight up drop shot. If I were Roger, I would be cautiously optimistic about my level of play up to this point. 
the two things he's going to have to have to make a deep run or even win the tournament are his first serve and his forehand. And so far, he's been serving a very high percentage, and his forehand has really been working for him. So those are really positive elements to his game right now. I would be super happy about that if I were Roger. And some of the question marks are, of course, the inconsistency he's displayed, maybe the lack of focus he's had in particularly his previous match. And if he can sort of fill in, connect the dots around the serve and the forehand, then he's going to be in real good shape. He's going to be able to make a deep run, if not win the French Open.